Good morning, church. How y'all doing this morning? Hallelujah. I said, good morning, church. How are y'all doing this morning? I don't know about you, but I feel good. I've been waiting on this day since I left here last week. Amen. I said, the Lord had something in my heart that I wanted to do last week. But he said, not so. You will have to go through this week. And I want you to go through this week. So when you sing this song, you will understand why you sing this song. So I want to all sing this week. I meditated on it. Ain't no long song, but I got a verse before I say it. Just bear with me just one minute. It's coming from John, the 17th, verse first. Amen. And it says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify the Son, that the Son also may glorify thee. Now, there's a little inspiration that it gives you after this, and it says, Jesus spoke these words at the time. He was also tried to be crucified. He knew that it was not going to be pleasant, but instead of running away, he turned to God. Christ saw the bigger picture of the sacrifice, and that is what kept him going. In our lives, we should also look at the bigger picture that God has for us. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody knows this song and the reason the choir sang, because I wanted this choir to sing with me today. They're not going down there and sit on the, they do not going to sit in the pew, but I wanted them to actually sing with me today. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't know how many of y'all always want God to don't move your mountain, but give you the strength to climb. Amen? Amen. Amen. My Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. Forgive me the strength to climb. And Lord, don't take away my stumbling blocks. But lead me all around. Oh, my Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. But give me the strength to climb. And Lord, 
Sunday school lesson. I tell you, God is a wonderful God. And he, he does things his way. I, I wrestled during the week some with a, with a message to bring to you. And, uh, yesterday, he said, well, why were you wrestling? If you listen to me, you wouldn't have to wrestle. But I wanted to do things my way. Yeah. <laughs> he said, not so. So this morning, uh, my message will, will be along the same lines as uh, his uh, Sunday school message this morning. If you obey, you can rejoice. <laughs> if you disobey, then you suffer the consequences. Amen. And, and that is so in, in this uh, world that we have going on today because there is just so much. We in the church, we say disobedience and lawlessness, but out there in the world, they say them churn and them ones out there that gone crazy. There's just so much going on in the world today. And when we trace it all back, it all comes back to man. It's us. It's us who have moved away from the word of God. We are all living in disobedience in one fashion or another. When, a rebel, when Deacon Williams um, said he had a visitor, and she said she came with her uncle, that's my niece, and that's uh, Miss Rosa Gibbs, granddaughter. That's, that's Ray Gibbs, though. That's, that's my sister niece. My mother raised her. But, uh, so she has uh, lots of families down here in, in Hollywood and so that's why she said she was busy. But my sisters and my brothers, as, as we go forward in in, uh, in this 2022, fixing to become 2023, uh, in your community, in my community, in my home, in your home, in some family members' home, there is just so much things seem like they're just going out of whack. There, there's just so much things that are not the way I used to remember them. I used to remember you could get into a disagreement with someone and you could go home and your mama could say what happened to you. Now our children get in a disagreement and they don't go home anymore. You know, we go visit them in a parlor somewhere. All because we, we somewhere man Man, I, I'm, I'm just gonna say, man, I ain't because I don't want nobody to get upset. But man has lost the way of the Lord. Man has stopped teaching their children. And when we look at the things that God said for us to do, He said, Let them know who I am. Let them know that it's I who give them the ability to gain wealth, to have health, to have strength. We can go to the doctor all we want. And, and doctors are wonderful individuals that God put it here for us to use. Amen. But the healing has to come from him. Yes. Because if he says not, it will not be. He yes. says so, then it is. So my sisters and brothers this morning, we can obey what the Lord says. And we can rejoice. And we can rejoice in his word because his word says he would never do he would never leave us. He won't forsake us. This morning, the year of the Jubilee, for two years, I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to do nothing. You don't do anything. You just sit back and let me take care of you. Because he can do that. Because he's the God of us all. I am the one who brought you out of Egypt. I am the one who led you by Fire by night, cloud by day. Yeah. Fire to keep the keep you warm, keep the animals away from you. Yeah. Yeah. Cloud to keep the sun from burning your head. I'm the one. I'm the one who keeps you and sustains you as long as you trust and believe in me. Amen. You trust me, you believe in me, yeah. then you should follow me. Amen. That's what the word of God said. So I'm going to look at this, this gentleman here this morning when we come into uh to trust in God and obeying God and doing the things that he says for us to do. 
We're going to look at the uh, book of Jonah. We're going to start at chapter 1. It's, I mean, everybody, we have all heard uh, Jonah being uh, taken down in the bottom of the sea by a mighty fish. But there are some things that Jonah was supposed to do while he was still on dry land in his disobedience he didn't do. If he had did what thus says the Lord, he, he never he never had to meet the fish. He, he would never have to meet the great fish. So what, what I'm going to try to do this morning, I'm going to try to parallel Jonah's life with my life. God says, I want you to do this. But me, with my little finite mind, I decide that, you know what, God, I might know a little bit better than you on this matter because I'm here living it. But he says, I see it all. I see it all. I, only thing you can see is what's in front of you. I can see tomorrow. I can see next year. I see it all because I have it all right here in the palm of my hands. Your life. There, young fella, your life, I knew you while you were still yet in the womb. Your life is already here in front of me. I know where you will go. I know when you will stumble. I know when you will fall. And when you fall, I'll be there to pick you up when you're in my word. So we're going to take a look at John. We're going to take a look at some of his characteristics versus what God wanted him to do. You know, you know Jonah, Jonah, God wanted Jonah to do what he would ask us to do. Show mercy. God shows us mercy every day. Yeah. Yeah. He said, how do you say that? Yeah, yeah. Well, he says the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. And God withheld that punishment from us every day. Yeah. Because that's what we deserve. But he doesn't give it to us because his son has already taken that punishment for us. So that punishment is withheld forever as long as we are in his word. We all deserve to go to hell for our sins. But Jesus said he, he's already conquered that. He's already conquered death. He took in the keys from hell. So what he would like to have us do is open up our hearts. Don't close it up. Open it up so then that we can go out and do these things that his word says we should do. Amen. Amen. So scripture says uh, the word of God came to Jonah. He, the word of God comes to us each and every day of our lives as long as we are children of God. Mm -hmm. We may not hear it because we don't want to hear it, but God is always speaking to us in some form or fashion. Amen. Amen. Dreams. Visions, yeah. you, you know, uh, that little thing that says, you know what, I should have, I should have. My first mind said, well, God said, if you had to listen to me and taken the left, you would be in this two-hour traffic jam. But something told you to do that. My spirit told you, but you refused to hear it. And it happens to us, it happens to the best of us. So what God, what God was telling Jonah, he says, I want you to go down to Nineveh and tell these people that if they don't do, they don't repent of their sins, they don't get themselves in order, then I'm going to come down and I'm going to destroy that city. Mm -hmm. So what he is telling us this morning, first sign, is we need to go out into our community. We need to go out while we are out, we need to, when they give us the opportunity, let somebody know that there is a better way. Amen. Amen. That we have a God that we can trust. Mm -hmm. We have a God that we can believe in. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you to push it on, but when they give you the opportunity, let them know. Yes. He yes. says, you know what? Somebody talk a little different. Somebody Walks a little different. Say, well, why is that? Well, he said, um, listen, that boy got the Holy Ghost. That boy got the Spirit of the Lord. And let them know that it's not grievous to have the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. So he wants us to go out and, and tell our neighbors, tell our sisters and brothers, cry unto them. Look, man, what we are doing right now 
has gone up to God and he doesn't like it. He said, the wickedness has come before me. He said, but what do we do sometimes when God tells us to do things? We go in the other direction. He said, Jonah, Jonah flee. So God is talking to us. He's telling us what he sees fit for us to do. And what do we decide to do in, uh, at certain times? We, we decide on our little self that we're not going to follow the word of God. We're going to go our own way, not so much as run, but not do it. We, we won't we obey it, but we'll disobey it. So then when the heartache and pain come, the first thing we do is we say, oh, Lord. But if we had done what he said in the beginning, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in right now. So God wants us to go out and he wants us to teach. He wants us to minister. He wants us to let the folks know in the, in the world who are not a part of the church. He wants us to let them know that, look, if you come with me, if you line yourself up with the word of God, there's some great benefits to that. There are many, many benefits to that. Okay. But the Bible says, the word of God says, you know what? I ran from the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And we think we can run from the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. We can run, but there ain't no hiding from him. Yeah. Because yeah. wherever you are, where, I don't care how low you are, when you get there, he's already there. Yeah. He is yeah. already there. So as we are running, as Jonah was running, what did God do while he's on the ship trying to get down to Tarsh? He sends a mighty wind. Doesn't he put winds in our lives? Don't he put headways in our lives? Yeah. We're straining to try to go this way. And he's pushing back on us as hard as he can because now he's going to let your will take he, your will. Second strongest thing on this planet, your will. Your will. His will is greater. But your will, man, we can take our will and we can bend a lot of things. So what God is going to do, he's going to push back against your will. He's going to push back against you, your will. It may be lawful for you to do it, but it may not be good for you. He wants you to see it's not good for you. So he, he put things in your path to push back against you. Like he did uh, Jonah. But you know what? Through all that, through all the pushing that he does with us, with all that he tries to do to get us to line up with him, at the end of the day, it's still up to each and every individual. I pray for my children. I pray for my grandchildren. But you know what? They're going to have to take the word of God for themselves. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Now, I love them. I, I, and I love them dearly. I love them to life. But they will have to line up with the word of God for themselves if they want to go back home with the Christ. So what do we do? Sometimes what we do, we, 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 we have been buffered and, and, and God is trying to change us. And we go to sleep on God. So you know what? I'm not going to hear that today. I'm, I, I don't want that word from that preacher today. I don't want to hear that word from that deacon today. I don't want to hear that word from that sister today. So we shut down. We shut down. We stop receiving. And if, if my hands are closed, God can't put nothing in and there's nothing can do out. So let us open up our hearts. Let him come in. Let's, let's go sleep on him. Let, 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 let us get to work. We come in to worship and we go out to do the work. So Mr. Mr. Jonah, while he's uh, while he's asleep uh, on, on top deck, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of things going on. There, there, there's numerous things going on. He said, man, why are we in this? We, we done been this way so many times before. This ain't never happened to us. Something going on. Something going on. It has something to do with that man down there that's sleeping. Somebody go down there and wake him up. He said, he said man, who's your God? He said, man, my God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, he already know where I'm at. He know where I'm at. 
He knew that I am, I am the cause of you going through all this. So there's something in each and every one of our lives that is the cause for us going through some of the things that we're going through. And it's called sin. Right. Yeah. It's not that difficult. The Bible says sin is just lawlessness. Anything that's against the word of God is a sin. It's lawlessness. We like to categorize that my sin is bigger than yours, your sin is bigger than mine. But you know what? At the end of the day, he says it's all sin. It's all against my word. So we 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 come here and, and we we see where where Mr. Jonah is at. Mr. Jonah is in deep trouble because of his disobedience. Because of what God told him to do, he decided that he will not do. Instead of standing and facing the Lord and letting him know where you have come short, we try to cover it up. We try to turn our backs on it. And neither one of those things are going to work. We cannot rebel against the word of God and continue to stand there in his presence. He will not allow us to do that. I trust him. I believe in him. And if I trust him and believe in him, then I should follow him. And I'm not going to run from him. I will not run from him. I will, I will tell him, Lord, this is my mess. Stay your hand against me and me only. If it's yours, own up to it. If God has designed a pathway for you to go, go that path in his strength, not your own strength. Because ours will go away. But if we go in the strength of the Lord... We will have strength for the day, strength for tomorrow, strength for the day afterwards. So, so after all, the, after this time, they came up with a plan that says, you know what? Since God is looking for me, cast me overboard. Cast me into the sea. Well, my sisters and brothers, we cannot tell our sisters and brothers outside of the church to cast us into the sea. Because they will throw us <laughs> with the quickness. Some of them in the church will throw you. Jesus. We, we as, as children of God, there is, a, there, is a, there is a path before we have to toss one of our brothers and sisters to the wolves. Before we have to turn one of our brothers and sisters away. There is called repentance. Bring them to repentance. And repentance is wherever you at, you turn away from that, do that one no more, and turn to the Lord. Yeah. And that's that's all we need to do. That's that is all we need to do. Let no man perish because of me. I don't want anything that I do at first sign to be a hindrance or a stumbling block to anyone here. I don't want anything I do at St. John to be a hindrance or a stumbling block to anyone. What I would, what I would ask the Spirit to do, to lead me as far as it can go. And when I've come to the end of that, then shut me up. Because I, I don't want to be a hindrance to anyone. So we, so we see him being, we see Lives being tossed, being turned yeah. upside down, left yeah. and right. He's tossed into the sea. He's gathered up by a mighty fish that God had waiting for him. So even though life may be hard sometimes, life may become difficult. Because being a child of God does not make a smooth pathway. You're going to have to go through some things. Yeah. Some things. Yeah. Are You're going to be buffeted by some things. But guess what? You are still a child of God, and you still should know in your heart of hearts that he says that I will never leave you. I, I have you. I, I have you right here in the hollows of my hands. So when we are caught up and, and we think that there that God can't hear us anymore, while I'm down here in the belly of this fish, I pray to my God. I pray to my God in heaven. And I said, Lord, I know I've done wrong. I have taken your words, and I have not done what you said. 
I have not done what thus says the Lord. So I have disobeyed you. But Lord, I want to come back to you. If you would save me from this, say that one a few times, but if you would save me from this, I will do that. He hear your cry, no matter how low you were, he still heard you. And he came to pick you up. Wherever you were, he came to pick you up. When we were down there in them, in them clubs with one door, he heard us. He heard us. Stuff started jumping off in there, he heard us. Lord, get me out of here. You, you don't know how you got out, but you were out. So he was able to save then, he's able to save now. No matter how low we become in our life, there's still God, he's still Working miracles, he's still doing what his word says he will do. But we must give him the opportunity. We must, man must give God the opportunity to work these wonders in our lives. To bring salvation into our lives. To get us from point A to point B. So we can become useful in his kingdom. So as we go forth, as we go forth, we can disobey him and not have joy. Or we can obey him and be joyous because that's what his word says. He, he will give us joy. Mm -hmm. now, I, I, can, I can do some things for individuals to, to, to bring a little happiness into their life, but I cannot give them joy. That can only come from the Lord. Only come from the Lord. And I believe that with my whole heart. So when the word of God comes to us the first time, maybe we should move and life won't be so hard as we continue down this path, down this forward motion to me. Because everything we are doing right now is for right now. Now, we do it today to lay groundwork for tomorrow. We're going to build on that for tomorrow. Build on that for our children. Build on that for our community. Build on that for our state. We all have a part to play in the upkeep of his kingdom. And the upkeep of his kingdom is not only here inside the first line. It's all around us. It's our sisters and our brothers and my nieces and my nephews. And it's all those. It's all those that we need to make a place for. To let them know that, you know what? When you fall. I have someone that can pick you up. Yeah. We can see the work, the working of God in Jonah's life. And I hope my sisters and brothers, we can see the working of God in our lives. Amen. That we, we don't have to run from him. A sister said we can run all we want, but we can't hide from him. But, but we, we, don't, we don't need to run from him. We need to, to face where we at, recognize, and says, Lord. You know what? I come to you in repentance. I come to you in remembrance. I know what you have done for my mother. I know what you've done for my father. Father, I know what you've done for your people, Israel. So, Lord, I come to you in that sense today. That you would allow me, even after I have disobeyed, to be useful for your kingdom. So, as, as we see Brother Jonah just, just moving along now. As we see him come, come back to God after being saved, he says, uh, after he came out of the belly of the, of the great fish, it put him where he needed to be. So after all the troubles and torment that we have gone through in our life, God still uses us and he puts us right where he needs us to be. He will put us there if we allow him to put us there. I can't work against your will, but if you allow me to, I can bring you to a place of just pure joy in your heart, and, and, and you can be a blessing to someone else. So my sisters and my brothers, as we look out on the world that we're, we're living in today, let us teach our children. Let us teach our neighbors. Bible says we shouldn't have to teach it, but let's teach it. But you know what? 
there is a better way. There is more joy, more peace, more understanding. Yeah. Let, let us not be so quick to, to judge. Let, let us reason with one another. Yeah. 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 Glory, glory. Let, let's see if we can do that. Let, let's see if we can do some reasoning with one another. And it's all right. It's it's all right to disagree. Let's just not be disagreeable. So let us come together as servants of God, being used by God, so we can go forth and try to make a corner of our lives and somebody else's life a better place. So we don't have to run from God. God will always show his mercy to As we go forward in life, let's build the groundwork so that when we leave, our children and our children's children, they will have something to stand on. Glory. I know some of the some of the older gentlemen like myself, you know, we, we were in church all the time. We were at church. We weren't in church, but we were at church. But there was something rubbed off on us while we were at church. That's why today I'm in church. And, and, I, and I thank God for allowing me to be in church. Because we have some uh, very difficult days ahead of us. We can see the Bible predicted. You know, they not predicted, the Bible prophesies of them. You know, there will be some hard days ahead. There will be some trouble, turbulent times. Man has already become lovers of self. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's the word of God that will keep us. My sisters and my brothers, on this Sunday, on this rainy Sunday, I want to thank you for allowing me to come to you today. And may the Lord bless and keep you as my prayer. And I um, hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And see, y'all thought y'all were getting rid of me, but second Sunday in December, I'll be back. Good to see you. Yes, and I, I, I thank the bishop for that. Uh, just, just, just keep working me, and I ask that y'all continue to pray for me, keep lifting me up in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Till all we come with our heads bowed, Father, we come to our heart open. Giving you thanks, dear Lord, for another day's journey. Dear Lord, you didn't have to do it, but we, we're so thankful and we're so grateful that you did. We just want to say thank you. Father, thank you for lying down last night. Father, your grace has touched this morning and woke us up and started us on this day's journey. Dear Lord, we just want to say thank you. Father, thank you for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, dear Lord. Father, I ask that you would extend a special blessing to them. Father God, not for my sake and not for their coming. Father God, for just for their walk with you. Father God, we ask you to bless them, each home that's re represented here today. Father God, bless this community. Father God, bless this state. Bless mankind everywhere, dear Lord. Because we all need you. Father God, bless the unconcerned. Those that even don't even know your name. Father God, we ask that you bless them this morning. Dear Lord, when, when you get done doing the blessing around, Father, don't forget dear old me. Father God, I'm broken. I'm broken just like anyone else, dear Lord. My heart's broken. My body needs healing. Father God, and we thank you now for allowing us this opportunity to come out in the name of your son, Jesus. And dear Lord, when we have done all that's been assigned to our hand, when we go in to come out no more, we ask for a home in your kingdom, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.